Hello everyone. Thank you very much for watching another class of like online class we're doing from uh, Kagawa headquarter, uh, Yamato headquarter from um, Japan. And uh, so we are doing, this is going to be the last online class we're going to be, going to be do, doing uh, this year, uh, 2020. And my name is Akira. I'm going to be your host for this class. And this is Megumi, my colleague. She's making really good uh, noodles today uh, for the last class we're going to have for this year. And so we are talking about today, um, this is uh, well, one of the, well, from the oldest traditions that we still follow in Japan. Uh, that's eat um, soba noodles on the New Year's Eve, um, it's like December 31st. And it's going to be a good, um, very good uh, learning class. So uh, let's get into uh, this class. And please allow me to spend just a few minutes um, talking about our company. So Yamato Manufacturing, we're 45 years in this business of noodles. Um, so we manufacture noodle machines that are designed for restaurants and small production. These are designed to do uh, fresh noodles from scratch on small scale. And we be uh, running noodle schools, ramen, uh, udon, and soba noodles. And so we run this kind of school like in Tokyo and Kagawa, here in Kagawa. And we, you know, teach not only uh, production of um, soup stop or noodles, soups and toppings and menu development, but also uh, operation and management as well, like for people who want to start out uh, restaurants, you know, noodle businesses. And we have uh, customers using our machines in 61 countries and more. And we have offices in Japan, Korea, Singapore, Netherlands, and New York, United States. We have partners in different countries. And so we basically um, team of noodle making experts who help our customers succeed in their businesses. And so basically by training um, and uh, providing like noodle equipment and you know, whatever they need to um, you know, start out and improve their noodle um, businesses. So for those of you like who are interested in like doing something um, with noodles, um, please feel free to contact us. So let's get started this class. And we're talking about New Year Eve noodles and I'm going to talk about, so first, so why we, why we eat soba noodles or other types of noodles on the New Year's Eve. And because this is the first time we're talking about soba or buckwheat noodles in this class, um, I'm going to, you know, like, I feel like obligated to talk about soba noodles. So everyone know what, what soba noodles are, um, ingredients, uh, noodles, soup toppings and provide production methods. How they're made, and um, so basically in this class, you know what 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 I want to do, right? Personally, is that like you know promote um, New Year's Eve noodles in your neighborhoods, and um, after that, we're gonna make noodles, certain types of noodles like um, Mimigami is gonna make uh, on our noodle machine from scratch, and we're gonna move to our kitchen, and uh, we we're gonna have our instructors um, who's gonna make a few suggestions of New Year's Eve noodles. And lastly, we are gonna do a Q&A session. So if you have any questions, please send them in the comments. So we're talking about um, your New Year's Eve noodles. Like it's almost the end of year and um, it's almost uh, well, 20 years old tradition or many Japanese follow, still follow today and that's eating Soba noodles on December 31st. Um, there are several theories why we study eating soba noodles in this day. And, you know, around, time of, well, around this time of year, uh, we tend to look back what happened during the year towards the, you know, and I think it's common for many of us to reflect on what we did this year. So what we could have done better or differently and make a resolution we wish for what kind of year we wish for the next year. And I think the end of year around this time is when we like have moments like these, you know, to ourselves, right? So, um, and then 
Well, there are many theories besides having soba noodles and newsy, but like here are a few of them. Because um, soba noodles are thin and long. They're, they're believed to bring a long and healthy life. And I think many, many people like knew like the health benefits of buckwheat before in the old days. And I think um, so like a ch kind of Chinese related like kind of cultures, you know, people who are kind of related to the culture. Uh, I think they have sort of like same sort of like belief like towards the um, eating noodles. Um, so like basically, you know, having like soba noodles like with, uh, with like the belief to like prolong life and extend one's fortune. Soba noodles like as uh, believed to bring or well, luck for money. Well, for gold or silver craftsmen, like in old days, I used to use buckwheat powder to gather scattered gold powder. So based on this, people believe eating soba noodles would attract money or money luck. And because soba noodles are easy to break, people believe eating soba noodles would also help them break off or dispel the comedy or hardship we had over the year. Also, the word soba sounds like a Japanese word for near or close. The people make a wish will be, will be like being close together with loved ones next year by surrounding a table, eating bowls of soba noodles with them. Um, there are many other theories, but like many people, many Japanese are like you know, people who have to eat soba noodles, like soba noodles, like um, certain types of noodles, the New Year's Eve, that's for their wishes, um, the good fortunes that they desire for the next year, a break with the unfortunate they had during the year towards the brighter year next year. And so soba noodles, so New Year's soba noodles, they usually sell me hot soup, but it's well, it's sometimes like cold dipping noodles for some people. And um, bowl of soba noodle dish has the following parts, noodle soups, noodles, soup toppings. And because this is the first time we're talking about soba noodles, you know, I, I just need to like spend the, just a little bit of time like studying what soba noodles are and what makes, what makes good soba noodles. And it's not going to be sufficient to understand like what soba noodles fully in this class, so we'll probably have to like do another class just on soba noodles. And so let's uh, let's uh, start talking about like soba noodles in detail. Like so, noodles are basically made of like buckwheat, and I'm gonna explain that more in late uh, details later. But like buckwheat doesn't have any gluten, so um, it, it is difficult to make make it into noodles forms of noodles by itself. So we sometimes you need to use like wheat flour or like other binding agents. And soup, uh, soup like hot soup, is uh, the stock itself is made of like thick slices of bonito and other types of fish plates, plus uh, kaishi, which is uh, basically seasoning, seasoning which is uh, mainly made of like tamari soy sauce. And toppings typically range from like you know the tempura, uh, shrimp tempura, or like marinated sh shiitake mushrooms, vegetables, eggs, fish like um, marinated herrings. Um, this is just uh, like traditional, like hot soup, um, soba noodles. And soba in Japanese means like buckwheat, which is, which is actually a grain like triangular shaped seed and not related to wheat despite the name. Because buckwheat itself does not have any gluten, it's difficult to form into the noodle shapes. Normally we add we flour and other ingredients to buckwheat to make soba noodles. And because we look for the, like when we eat soba noodles, like people like look for the good aroma of buckwheat, which uh, dissipates uh, into the air. Like that. Buckwheat seeds are housed mainly using two methods, roller milling and stone milling. Roller milling provides a bigger milling volume. It's faster, but because the milling speed is fast, with or well, some heat generated in the process. Back being milled on this method, method like tend to lose the moisture and the flavors. A stone milling grinds back with at a slow speed because between the surfaces of the uh, stone plates, because it generates little heat, the flour re retains the moisture and the distinctive aroma, but the output is very low, so it's very costly to mill it that way. 
and but this is definitely better quality. The back we, so the back we seed is first hulled and resulting flowers go through a series of like uh, rollers to meal to finer powder. At each set of rollers, the flour becomes finer and sifted through sieves of certain sizes. Ichiban go, which means first flour is white in color and rich in starch and powdery, gives a bouncy texture to dough but makes it hard to form noodles or only from itself. It also does not give like that we aroma or flavors. So nibanko, which means second flower, gives scrub, buckwheat, aroma and flavor in, with rich in nutrition. And the color is light yellow with a greenish tint. So many so famous shoba shops use nib this nibanko because we, we can make soba noodles with great aroma with this flower. The flower obtained from the out layer of the seed is called sambanko, the third flower by grinding nibanko through an acid of rollers. Sambanko gives a strong aroma, but has a dark color. It, although it gives a lot of nutrition, the rich fiber content makes noodle texture coarse and gives a flavor some people may find a bit unpleasant. The flour taken from the core is called hanako, which is usually used for dusting. And it's a bit, um, well, it's a bit like how to see like kind of like illustration that we have in this slide, but like you can see like, you know, where, where each of these uh, grades of like flowers are taken from. And um, so different, um, so the different, different like grades of like flowers like have like varying degrees of like, you know, nutrients, right? The protein, for example, uh, Nibanko, which is like um, for the highest um, quality of like um, buckwheat flour, um, has like protein content of like 10%, even though like Sambanko, uh, which has like a darker color, has like highest in protein content. So it has like very different, like varying like nutrients, um, depending on like where the flour is taken from, from the buckwheat seed. And there are other benefits from, uh, you know, we can, we can take from buckwheat. And uh, well, starch accounts for most of the carbohydrates in buckwheat. And buckwheat will be in minerals, the minerals uh, that are listed in the previous table. And so the minerals like contained um, four times as much potassium as wheat does. Uh, it contains over 11 times magnesium as wheat does. Um, 11 times iron and of zinc as white rice. Contains vitamin K, vitamin E, Choline, and the routine is something uh, you know, kind of special or kind of unique that's um, that exists in like buckwheat. It's type of polyphenol, and um, it, what it does is strengthen the capillary vessels, and lowers blood pressure, regulates blood sugar levels, and helps with diabetes. So it has a lot of um, good uh, health benefits, and um, the quality of deliciousness of uh, quality of deliciousness of super noodles largely depends on the distinctive aroma of buckwheat. And um, the like, aroma molecules like gradually dispersed in the air to concentration below the levels we can detect over time. Uh, so the, like, you know, after the buckwheat seeds are hulled and milled. So um, this is the reason why like we uh, freeze the buckwheat flour. And this is why the reason why like noodle making artisans make noodle, soba noodles on three principles like fresh making. So buckwheat flour needs to be freshly milled, made to noodles and cooked and served as quickly as possible. Also because buckwheat does not have, contain a gluten, which helps form noodles, usually need to blend it with the ingredients we call a binder. And these are common you commonly use binder ingredients for soba noodles, except for wheat flours. So mountain yam brings great flavor and noodle texture. Magwar is astringent, so it's usually mixed with baking soda to get the scums out. And they're typically like chopped up and mashed and kneaded into dough of buckwheat flours. The fenori are types of seaweed 
that work as strong binding agents, making noodles elastic and tasty. And standard soba noodles are usually made with a mix of buckwheat flour and wheat flours, which are usually high in protein content, which helps um, you know, buckwheat flours to join together, bind together. And so they are mixed at different ratios, depending on the type of soba noodles we want to make. Normally, uh, because buckwheat costs more than wheat flour, the higher the ratio of buckwheat flour mix, the more expensive soba noodles. So 100% buckwheat and jiwari soba and nihachi or 80 to 20 ratio buckwheat to wheat are considered high quality and sold at high-end soba shops. Our soba machines can make up to 100% buckwheat soba noodles. And our ramen machines can produce up to 60% buckwheat soba noodles from scratch. And, you know, it's like kind of, kind of wheat flour, like we um, will mix it with the uh, buckwheat flour uh, to make soba noodles or this type as like protein content, like should be high to help bind the, uh, the buckwheat flour into no uh, noodles. And the ash is something, ash is basically like how much minerals it contain in the wheat flour and, you know, the minerals, higher minerals, so like, when we talk about the like, sambanko, the third flower of the buckwheat, um, even though it has well, the more well, high, well, the um, high degree of like aroma, uh, you know, it's, it has like it also has like a lot of minerals contained in it, so it makes the noodle color darker. So that's the same thing. Um, so the darker, like the higher ash content, the darker the color, but, like has like stronger wheat flavor. And but like you know, it makes the noodle texture a bit coarse. So having well using the uh, wheat flour with like high ash content uh, would uh, make noodle texture like kind of kind of poor. So you know like, but if you use the if you want to use the um, like a sambanko like dark flour like a buckwheat, uh, I, I guess like uh, the color it, it wouldn't like be, make like much of a difference. So like. Well, you may want to use um, flour with a high ash content, like when using um, sambanko buckwheat or like dot flour, the buckwheat. And viscosity is uh, basically like how elastic the noodles become. So basically the higher the viscosity value, the better the noodle texture. So uh, it's so like you should uh, use the wheat flour with a high viscosity value. And um, because buckwheat brings so much health benefits, we should consider blending buckwheat flour into our noodles. Even if you are, well, usually like serving uh, other types of noodles to, to provide nutritional values to our customers. So we may also want to think about like blending into pasta, ramen noodles, etc. And we can also talk about the health benefits that buckwheat brings to our customers. The blending ratio of each um, solid ingredients may depend on the qualities, qualities of each ingredient, what elements you want to bring out in your noodles and let your customers experience. For example, buckwheat aroma, certain noodle texture, and how well it goes with your soup, sauce, etc. And um, there's another custom like, uh, you know, when we uh, Eat at the uh, soba shop in Japan, and so after you finish your bowl, after we finish the bowl of ozaro soba noodles, um, the soba shop like would bring you a picture of like soba you, which is a uh, hot water used to cook your uh, soba noodles, and uh, to capture and provide nutritional values of buckwheat, um, soba shops like provide the uh, the soba you, and because um, the good nutrients we talked about are dissolved in the cooking water. The customers drink it by diluting the soup with the soba you, and this gives us like satisfying and clean finish. And it's something like you may also, you know, think about doing like in your shop. Okay, so let's talk about start talking about the uh, production process. And um, well, this production process like is not really, um, you know, uh, well limited to. Um, production of soba noodles. 
uh, and let's start talking the way. So, uh, spot noodles, like, you know, as we talked about, buckwheat doesn't have any gluten. So, you know, uh, different from um, production ramen noodles, that we, like when we make dough, um, you know, we are not talking about like building a gluten structure, but um, basically, uh, soba noodles, like if you're doing like 100% buckwheat soba noodles, we are basically like hydrating, hydrating the, uh, so di distributing the water throughout the uh, buckwheat flour particles. So as the, as we mix the water with the buckwheat flowers, um, with a hand, or like with a mixer, the particles of like uh, flour, uh, you know, like comes together like gradually. And then um, that's what like, you know, agitation granulation have like, uh, talks about here, like last rate here. So just like um, this way, the dough like becomes a bigger and bigger over time, like as we like as it mix with the flour. So basically like what we are doing, like in mixing process is a good hydration of dough. And uh, so we, uh, we can make soba noodles on our, of course, like on a soba machine. And of course, like we can make um, soba noodles like up to like 60% buckwheat mix on our ramen machine. So basically we are forming it into, forming it into uh, dough and then like sheet shaped dough. And after that, we're just gonna thin it and cut it and portion it. And uh, unlike ramen or like udon noodles, you know, soba noodles, like we don't really rest it. We, we don't really go through a resting process. And uh, well, this some this is something like you know we we talked about like a lot like in the previous classes, but like hydration um, is very important. So like how much water we add to the flour, the solid ingredients, and soba noodles is considered like high hydration dough like noodles. And so it's usually like authentic ones, like usually like over 45%. And, but um, the ones like we make on a ramen machine are um, considered like kind of medium hydration ratio. And uh, so basically the higher the hydration ratio, the less time we should mix. Long, uh, lower the hydration ratio, like, you know, longer, that longer time like we should mix. And um, talking about like water, um, like liquid, um, let me let me just uh, spend just a minute like on this one, like ingredients, so water. Water is very important and then uh, kind of water we use, um, you know, like cooking noodles, like cooking the broth is uh, soft water, soft water. Um, because like when we make, uh, when we cook the noodles, for example, um, you know, some of the ingredients need to be released to the hot water, I mean, uh, in the cooking water. And in, in exchange, the noodle gets water, and then that's how the noodle gets cooked. But like in hard water, like you know, where which has like a lot of like minerals already in it, like magnesium, like calcium, um, so there's less room for uh, all these ingredients to be released to. So uh, when we cook the um, noodles, like in hard water, like it takes longer time, and if it takes longer time, then like the, some of the noodles actually melts into the cooking water. So we lose some of the noodles in cooking water so the yield of the fresh I mean, cooked noodles is not, is poor, is not good. We are getting like less cooked noodles out of uh, the same water, you know, hard water. So, uh, um, and then, you know, it takes a long, long time to cook. So, you know, we have to spend more, more, more money on gas, labor. Um, so if you have to work with the hard water, then you should use softener like this, like that wine showing a picture. Um, it's very simple device that you can install in your restaurant to uh, convert your hard water into uh, soft water. And uh, it's, it's got a lot of benefits over time. Okay, and um, so talking about the different sizes, noodle sizes, noodle sizes is very important. And uh, this is the kind of cutter we use uh, today on our like noodle making session in the ramen machine. Um, then uh, this is the, what we call like slitter cutter that, well, this basically determines the width of the noodles, width of the noodles. And um, so the width of noodles like is basically fixed by the cutter. And um, so the, the cutting size, cutter size, like the size of the noodles, like, you know, thickness, width, um, 
determines the noodle texture. Uh, and uh, so it's, it's very important to like cross section noodles uh, is very important. And thickness is determined by the, uh, the set of rollers, like the roller gap uh, between the set of rollers. And so uh, thickness is determined by a set of rollers and with it determined by the, uh, the cutter size. And we can say the same thing like when we make the soba noodles like on our soba machine, uh, which uses the, of course, like kind of some kind of rollers, but like um, different cutting method. But like, you know, we're talking about the same thing, right? So we are, we are just focusing on the cross section of noodles, you know, the, the size, the shape, you know, how much is the width, how much is the thickness. So this um, affects the noodle texture greatly because um, the, when we cook noodles, you know, we are having the uh, cooking water kind of penetrating from the size or size, the, of the surface of the size that are, you know, what the noodles are cut. So um, then after we cook the noodles, the, the shape in the cross section shape of the noodles um, becomes, you know, this kind of a square shape, right? If we, you know, cook the noodles with uh, like with 1.5, um, 1.3, you're going to have uh, the kind of square shape like right, with that like four size dent dented. And um, when we eat the noodles, you know, the soup, hot soup, like kind of, well, all, like held between like in these dents so that, you know, customers can like taste more of the soup when they eat the noodles. And it was like texture wise, uh, it's definitely better than the, uh, well, the other uh, pattern that is shown, like in, it's called like reverse cut noodles. So um, the cut surface, the shape of it is, uh, is also very important too. Okay, um, well, going back to the uh, or New Year's Eve noodles, right? Um, other than other than the uh, or soba noodles, um, well, there are some variations of. Uh, New Year's Eve, like soba noodles across Japan, regional, regional Toshikoshi soba, like Toshikoshi means like kind of across the year, like New Year's Eve noodles. And well, you know, I, I'm, I'm in this place called like Gawa Prefecture, uh, where we are, where our headquarters is located. Because Kagawa is home of like Sanuki Udon, where, you know, there are over like 700 Udon specialty shops, right? And a certain um, percent of people here like have bowls of udon on the well eve of like New Year's instead of soba noodles. So people in Kagawa have sort of like a food culture or tradition that's a bit different from the rest of Japan. So you know, I I thought like why not promote this kind of tradition like having New Year's Eve noodles in different places, different places in the world. It can be soba noodles, or you don't have to be soba noodles, but like you know udon, ramen, pasta. Or like whatever you think like would bring good fortunes or joys to the families of your neighborhoods. So this is a, this is a kind of more suggestion. I think it'd be a good way to introduce this small tradition of Japan to your customers to experience a sense of being in Japan, experiencing the New Year's Eve noodles together. So we like to share some, like how noodles are made, how some noodles are made from, from scratch. I share a few examples like holy noodles that you may want to introduce to your customers in the neighborhood in this class. So, um, so that's what I have for this uh, lecture part. And it's time for us to start making some noodles. Okay, so um, we're making some something special. Um, so we are making, basically, I don't know, I actually don't know like what to call it, but like, Basically, it's a it's a pasta. It's a, it's a type of pasta that we're trying to make here, and so this is a flour, the well, high protein content flour, and this is a buckwheat uh, soba noodles. Like you know, but as you can see, this is like a bit darker. So this is a uh, you know what we call a sanban or the third flour, like you know we talked about in the lecture, right? And then. Uh, so this is the, oh, this, this is salt. And this is a whole egg in powder form, fully in powder form. You can use fresh eggs as well. And this is a dulam, similar in a flour. And this is oil as well in the water. 
So these are going to the, the noodle or pasta that we're going to make. So this is a, it's a Richmond, Richmond one machine. It's a Richmond one machine, and particularly this model is uh, uh, for, well, this like, it's a C certified model, which means that it can be exported into EU countries and used in EU countries to make uh, fresh noodles, fresh noodles. And it has um, it has a 10 kilo ground mixer, and um, so you can make up to you can mix up to like 10 kilograms of flour at a time. And on top of it, you're adding a liquid, adding liquid, right? Liquid of up up to up to 40 percent. So 40 percent, 40 percent of the uh, 10 kilograms, so four kilograms. And so a maximum you can get around like 14 kilograms of dough at the time. And um, so we are adding the, uh, the liquid to the solid ingredients flour. And so this liquid, she just uh, dissolved. Um, it's, it's, it's like kind of liquid solution as uh, well, the vegetable oil and with water and salt. And so the, the liquid like dripping through the holes, right, small holes to be added to the flour uh, little by little. So or to facilitate the uh, good hydration of dough. And um, yeah, I can't, we can't, we can't really watch, I keep watching it forever. So he uh, prepared the dough in advance. So look at the, uh, look at the color, it's a bit darker. And, you know, from the, the buckwheat, the third um, buckwheat flour. And, and I, I wish, I wish you, you guys could smell it. It's got the uh, aroma of like about weed because it's a, uh, it's a, it's a sambanko, like the third flower. It's got a strong um, buckwheat aroma to it. And so first process after mixing, um, we're doing like first process after mixing we're doing is that like just kind of feeding the dough into the set of rollers and to make well a sheet of dough. But this is still this is still rough, like still really very fragile. It's, it's kind of weak, I mean uh, in other words. And uh, so we are going slow uh, um, to apply like really special pressure the dough to um, use it. Not only has like buckwheat, so the buckwheat flour in this in this pasta um, just at a 10% to the total total solid ingredients, just 10%. And so it's like a lot of a lot of like a lot of percentage, like most of the percentage of so, uh, solid ingredients is actually uh, wheat flour. In this case, in this uh, recipe, so you know it's got which, which has like a lot of gluten in it. So um, we we need to well develop a gluten structure inside dough by um, you know applying 
uh, good uh, good pressure to the dough. So that's why that's why you're going slow. Uh, a first round of sheeting. So the mixing is not yet done. Uh, we just mix it for four minutes and then uh, we're gonna add the, uh, the remaining map liquid into it and mix it for six minutes. And we, we talked a little bit about like hydration ratio, like or relationship between like hydration ratio, varying amount of hydration ratio and mixing time. So basically the higher the hydration ratio, the less the less mixing time, uh, less time like we should mix. And you know, the lower hydration ratio, the less or uh, longer the what mixing we, we should mix, right? And this is because of like medium hydration ratio noodles. So we mix it for uh, 10 minutes in total. For high hydration ratio noodles, like soba noodles, like you know, 100%, let's say, 100% or like 80 to 20% ratio soba noodles, the mixing time will be like just just five minutes. And when we're talking about a hakata style, like tonkotsu style noodles, like thin and hard noodles, like low hydration ratio noodles, the mixing time will be like 15 minutes. And now we're doing the uh, combining process because the dough sheet is still still very fragile it's very weak um, so we want to make it stronger firmer by compounding them through the roller so what she's doing now like the kind of separating it to two sheets right two sheets of dough and compounding it through the set of rollers Right. And um, yeah, look at the color. It's, got, it's, it's uh, yeah, it's like so. It's like it's. I think it's cross between, you know, well, yellow pasta and like a bit like kind of pale greenish soba noodles. So it's it's, it's uh, I'd say it's a it's a good good color and definitely definitely has has like stronger. Uh, strong, like distinctive smell of uh, buckwheat. Yeah, blending buckwheat flour into your noodles would be like you know a good idea, and then like um, bring a lot of like health benefits. But like you know, we, we need to be careful. Like you know, if your some of your customers like have like allergy to buckwheat and we should you know we, we need to like well of course like um have a like or well, uh, clear display of like um or like or label um that you know it's like these noodles like uses uh the buckwheat so like, like in the labels or like a display or signs at your restaurant Okay, so that was the uh, combining process, and that was the first one. And um, we usually do like this uh, process like twice to make sure that 
the algorithm inside those is like fully developed. And so she's doing like that for a second time. And after you go through like second combined process like that, dough is um, pretty firm, pretty firm. And so after it's gone through the second combined process, so she started like, see that like she's dusting it, she's dusting it because, um, well, from this point on, you know, we, we don't want the uh, noodle sheet to stick. So we, we like to dust like to dust some uh, flowers on it to make sure that it's not going to stick. <clears throat> and uh, that type of dusting powder that we are using in this case, because it's for, um, for like overseas, like, you know, it's a, well, certain, certain I mean, supplies, but like certain ingredients is not, are not available. So, um, the type of like that's the product that we use for this is uh, just um, for a potato starch or like corn starch that helps like the noodles from sticking. But uh, when we're making, um, you know, as we talked about in the lecture, right? Uh, so we're making authentic soba noodles. Um, they use uh, what, what they call like hanako. That's the the powder that they can take from the core of the uh, buckwheat seed. So after the second combined process, so all we, all we had to do is just um, thin it, thin it to the final thickness. Okay, the thing is done. And then the buzzer let you know that mixing is done. And it starts automatically. So she's doing like another round of sheeting, thinning, and um, we we need to we need to like thin it. We need to like make the dough um, sheet thinner gradually, uh, bit by bit. Otherwise, like if we thin it like drastically, right, then that that would damage the uh, the dough, uh, which undermines the uh, the noodle texture. So we wanna we wanna like gradually thin it. And uh, because it's uh, it's considered like well type of pasta, um, we like to cut it with a cutter that well turns this uh, dough into well the shape shape that that's uh, that's considered like um, type of pasta and. Um, Well, the shape, like, I mean by, like, kind of cross-section of noodles. Okay, so that, that, this dough just went through the uh, water gap, like, 1.5 millimeter. And the actual thickness is, is 1.8. So there's a difference, like, 0 0.3 millimeter. And the actual thickness is always bigger when the dough has like seven percent of the gluten, the gluten bars is back. So 
there's a, in this case, like there's a 0.3 millimeter difference. And for cutting, they still with, num it's, a, it's a round shape, like um, number 18, it's like 1.7 millimeter width, it's a round shape cutter. It's, it's not exactly like precisely round, but like it's, it's kind of kind of like oval oval shape. And this this cutter at this size, you usually use the for to cut uh, well spaghetti and you know, the certain types of pasta like that with the size around the um, size. So we are cutting it. So what this machine is doing now is like actually like thinning it and cutting it and portioning it like three things at the same time. I mean, three things like in, in a series of actions. So thin, cut, and portion. And a portion is a cutter that rotates inside this machine to portion the noodles. And the portioning is, well, basically, um, you know, basically determines the size of the noodles by, well, shortening it, shortening the length, or like, you know, making it longer. So um, the cutter, you can use a touch of knob, like you can make it longer, you can make it shorter to have like smaller serving size, to make it longer, to have a uh, bigger serving size, or uh, you will. So see like I was very short, but like uh, this time like it's very long, you know, like bigger, bigger serving size, definitely. So that was the um, well pasta, kind of special special pasta with the buckwheat and smolin smolin flour like needed in them. And you know, I, I wish you guys were here like to um, take a smell of it and like it's got like really strong aroma of buckwheat. And then the color wise, color wise. Uh, it's almost like so also like kind of kind of soba like soba noodles like color like even though it has like just ten percent they just a ten percent of solid uh, solid ingredients to weight um, you know because we use the kind of buckwheat flour that we call like sambanko the third flour which has like a lot of minerals like which has like high ash content and uh, so that you know the the color is darker and has like really stronger buckwheat aroma. And the noodle texture is a bit, bit coarse because it has a lot of minerals in it. Um, so, you know, it, it kind of like affects the noodle texture as well in that way. Um, so I think the, uh, you know, kind of balancing, well, you know, we talked about blending ratios of uh, like different solid ingredients. So you need to like balance between like kind of what, what, how strong the well buckwheat aroma should be, you know, like you want the customers to experience, and then well, you know, how coarse the uh, the noodle texture, you know, you you'll be okay with, and uh, you know, depending on maybe like flavor the soup you're serving it with, um, so you it's a, it's a well 
the recipe and it's like blending ratio that you, you need to consider like, you know, like by kind of imagining what kind of well, neural tissue you want your customers to experience and what kind of flavors, um, you know, you want your customers to well, taste, right? <clears throat> and uh, the soba noodles, like production of soba noodles is very sensitive and like very deep and um, noodle making artisans, like, you know, they, they like spend like years, like learning, you know, how to master the skills of like noodle making, right? And uh, so we, although we have like noodle school, like just, you know, the special, especially noodle school, like teaching just soba noodles. Um, well, that's, that's conducted in our uh, Tokyo uh, school. Um, so it's a, it's a very serious subject, like um, it's a very um, good, um, you know, well, it's, it's yeah, like, there's a lot of depth to it. And um, we actually have like textbook, um, you know, that's written just on uh, some of the noodles, just on noodles. And also talks about like all these like different grades of um, black wheat flour. Uh, you know, we, we talked about in the lecture. So if you are interested in, um, you know, you can check it, check it out on, my, on our website, all right? Um, so it's time for us to uh, move to the kitchen. Okay, so this is our kitchen, and um, well, well, when we conduct classes like school, like you know, this is where we uh, do like culinary cooking sessions. And um, so, as you can see, we have like all these like cooking equipment that allow us to cook like some or well, do some some similar serious cooking. And this is an induction cooker, like big ones, like you know, ten kilowatts. Um, these are pretty big ones, pretty powerful. And these induction cookers, for example, like allow us to cook for different types of, uh, you know, very thick noodles like tonkotsu broth, like in you know, a pork, like thick, thick broth, like they're well made from like um, pork bone, pork bones, pork backbones, like even like pig head, um, shoulders. Um, so it's it's well. So we have like all these like different equipment over here, like to allow us to like different types of cooking. Um, to allow us to, uh, you know, like create parts, actually the components of like that come together to, um, well, well, complete the well recipes of uh, our students. Each each student, you know, who has his or her own ideas, like what kind of noodles dishes that they want to make. So these uh, these items, like this place, uh, helps our student, um, you know, learn and create, develop their own recipes, noodle recipes. And it's very intense. Like we, we conducted over like just six days, Kinkagawa, Tokyo, and Singapore. And uh, other thing is that like you know we've been like preparing the uh, e-learning courses, e-learning course like online courses that you know we're hoping to uh, substitute some of the uh, curriculums that we do in like real courses. Um, so for those who are interested in, um, please. Uh, you know, let us know, then uh, we'll, we'll keep you guys updated, all right? Uh, so, well, we have like all these different stuff, like over here, um, different types of sauces, um, the oils, flavored oils, and apparently uh, they're making some, some like uh, stock out of the uh, red snapper fish over here. So it's kind of interesting, but like, let me introduce our uh, chief instructor first. So Mr. Ikeda, so he's our chief instructor, and then like he's uh, he has like strong background in Chinese cuisine, and so he he's done uh, like uh, well several like you know previous classes for us, and then um, you know we're lucky to have him like you know teaching like all these well different uh, noodle dishes you know coming from the strong background in Chinese cuisine. So uh, like, so if you have any questions. Um, Please uh, ask him online, and I uh, will be happy to answer your questions. So thank you, Mr. Takeda. Thank you. So Mr. Takeuchi, um, he's from, well, he's like, he, he's actually from like, um, well, Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, and he's well lucky to have him because like he speaks both um, native English and native Japanese. He has a strong background in Japanese cuisine, more towards the uh, kind of sushi. Um, well, uh, category and uh, well, like to have him to show us a few examples of like New Year uh, 
noodle dishes today. So and then you can call him Thomas, and uh, I'll pass it to Thomas. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Akira. Um, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, once again, my name is Thomas. I'm one of the instructors at the Yamato Noodle School. And today, I'll be um, introducing you guys the Japanese uh, New Year's Eve tradition, uh, Toshi Koshi Soba. So let's go over to the board to uh, let me just briefly talk about Toshi Koshi Soba. Okay, so Toshi Koshi Soba. So the direct translation is ear crossing soba, or it's also called a New Year's soba as well. So people, Japanese uh, people, have enjoyed the Toshi Koshi Soba on the New Year's Eve to wish a good year next year. And the reason why they have soba noodles on New Year's Eve because is because the symbolism of soba noodles, because soba noodles are long and thin. Uh, it symbolizes a uh, long, peaceful life. So to wish for a long, peaceful life, they have that soba noodles. And also, soba noodles are very healthy. So to wish for a good health, they eat the soba noodles. And also, compared to any other noodles, uh, soba noodles are tend to break and cut off, cut very easily. So it's symbolizing cutting away any bad luck uh, built up in the throughout the year. So these are the, some of the common reason uh, pe Japanese people have the so eat soba on the New Year's Eve. And it's called the Toshi Koshi Soba, New Year's Soba. So today I'll be making the traditional Toshi Koshi Soba and also um, uh, just a slight arranged New Year's Soba. It's a pasta version. Uh, so today I'll be making those two dishes. So first of all, I'll be making the traditional New Year's Soba. Okay, so first of all, I need to boil the soba noodles. So I'll be using this. And first I'll boil these for about a minute. Make sure the water is rapidly boiling. And start the timer. And you want to see the noodles be like moving around freely in the pot for the uh, consistent boil. And once the noodles are boiled, I'm going to put in, uh, I'm going to wash the noodles to remove the starch around the noodles and chill the noodles. And because Toshi Koshi Soba, usually enjoyed in hot version. I'm going to heat up the noodles again and put it together with the soup. Okay, the noodles are ready. So let's go over to the sink to wash the noodles. So make sure to wash the noodles to remove the starch around the noodles. And then now I want to chill the noodles. Okay. So the noodles are ready. Now the last step, I'm going to heat up the noodles again and put it into the bowl and add the soup in later.
And I'm going to heat up the noodles for maybe 10 seconds. And strain out the water so it doesn't dilute the soup. And into the bowl. And I'm going to pour this hot soba dashi into the bowl and put some toppings and that'll be it. Okay, for the toppings, I have leek, fish cake, and boiled spinach. Okay, so boiled spinach, leek, fish cake, and also crispy prawn tempura. Gonna add a little bit more of this leek. So Japanese people enjoyed this Toshikoshi Soba on New Year's Eve to wish for a good year next year. So next, I'll be making a little bit of a different take on the Toshikoshi Soba. Um, it might be difficult to prepare all these uh, ingredients. So I'll be making a pasta version of the Toshikoshi Soba. And I'll be using a pasta with some little bit of buckwheat noodle, buckwheat flour mixed in. So buckwheat pasta. And I'll be making tomatoes, seafood pasta dish out of this. OK. So first, I'll be preparing the sauce. So a little bit of olive oil. And a little bit of uh, garlic, thinly sliced garlic. So I want to extract the garlic flavor into the olive oil. I'll start boiling the buckwheat pasta. I'll boil these for two minutes.
and I will add in some clam. And also some prawn. And shimeji mushroom. And just saute these ingredients. And I'll add in some tomato sauce. And also a um, little bit of this boiling water to thin out the sauce. And I'm going to just simmer the sauce with the ingredients to extract all the umami into the sauce. We're going to add a little bit more of this boiling water. So make sure all the clam is opened up to so just check if it's um, completely fully cooked. Okay, the noodles are ready. Pick up the buckwheat pasta with the strainer and into the sauce. So allow the pasta to soak up all the sauce. Okay, so the pasta should be ready now. I'm going to put it, plate the pasta. So I'm going to use a tongs to just pick up all the pasta. And with all the toppings and the sauce. And lastly, I'm going to put some shiso leaves on top. Instead of basil, I'm just going to put shiso leaves. And just wipe off the side. Okay, so this is the seafood tomato pasta using buckwheat pasta.
So thank you so much, Thomas. Uh, that was uh, a great presentation. That's the last presentation that you you know we have like for this year. And you know, well, like, we are kind of hoping that you know you guys will be able to, like make this kind of like all well, New Year so about like some new year, like even noodles or like you know holiday noodles, and you know develop your own and you know well like put them in a package, right? Put them in a package like you know meal kits like we talked about like in the last class. And our sister company, uh, Sancho, um, well, actually has like this package. Well, it's, uh, it's got like kind of frozen. Well, this is the, well, 80-20 ratio um, soba noodles with the, well, the hot soup, uh, frozen hot soup, right? And then, well, of course, like along with like uh, other like uh, ingredients, like, you know, for toppings and condiments and other things, they put them in a package like this like kind of beautiful box. And uh, so, you know, they, they have like, cause they're into like retails, like they're into wholesales. So they have like these kind of brochures, kind of beautifully like kind of shot picture, with, you know, pictures. Um, so it's something that, you know, our like restaurant, we, we, we were we restaurants, right? I mean, may be of like think about doing, right? Like for our, you know, it doesn't have to be like this kind of well, sophisticated like, or, you know, nothing like that but like you just um well you, you've got like some like really good noodles like kind of unique unique one and you know broth like soup sauce even and well it doesn't have to be soba noodles it has to be like well past noodles like that we just did like you know anything that you know you think uh you'd be like well develop and serve like as a like holiday noodles that you know you think would bring one of joy and happiness and then maybe like well to fortunes um and you know by educating customers like what kind of tradition we have in japan like new year like why we eat um soba noodles like in december 31st every year and uh you know so well by to to be able like to stay close stay healthy right stay fortune for the next year right uh with our loved ones so um that's the kind of like message like we wanted to like convey to you guys um in this uh, last class we have on this well, 2020 and you know we we are hoping that like next year like 2021 will be like you know definitely a better year for everyone um you know every one of you guys and you know definitely like for our customers and um so you know we keep doing this um online classes to, that and then we're going to improve them but improve them from now on and then um to well better serve you guys to be able to like, you know, provide like more useful information, um, something that you guys can like start using right away. And uh, so if if there's a, like any, um, anything that you are interested in like learning about, like, you know, um, wanting us to do, um, please feel free to like, you know, let us know um, on our web, through our website, email, uh, any other like communication methods. And for those of you like for, for having like it's subscribe to our YouTube channel, like we've been doing, we're gonna be doing like these kind of classes, and we're gonna be like updating, uh, posting like, a lot of like videos that are will be very useful for your businesses. So um, please subscribe to our channel if you haven't done that.